Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be looking back on the year of 2018 from the perspective of the ever glorious series. 2018 has been quite an exciting year really, spanning from chapter 890, which is the tail end of Whole Cake Island, then blasting straight through the reverie, before finally landing in Wano with style. Speaking of the Land of the Samurai, if you're wondering what this wonderful artwork is, well this is the new channel banner created by the phenomenally talented Amber Red Draws, and you can find a link to her Tumblr in the description below. But before we get into this list and I have to provide a bit of a warning because it's going to contain pretty much every important spoiler that the manga has concocted over the last year. So if you're an anime only watcher you can expect to see these events occurring in the coming year but if you don't want to be spoiled then well this is your warning. For those of you who wish to proceed we've got a fair bit to cover so let's get straight into it. Welcome to the top 10 best One Piece moments of 2018. Number 10 Snake Man. Continuing the expansion of Gear 4th, 2018 provided us with the latest incarnation of Snake Man. It's a very compact and lean form, and even though it took me a bit off guard at first, like I guess every new use of Gear 4th has, to me, Snake Man suits Luffy a lot more than Bound Man, which has always seemed a bit clunky, whereas Snake Man is refined and a pure aesthetic treat to see in action. I also quite enjoyed the idea of Luffy completely abandoning defense in favor of speed, because once again, that feels more akin to Luffy's personal style of combat. All in all, it was a great event, adding a new New weapon to the ever-growing straw hat arsenal and I look forward to seeing more of it in the future. Number 9 the giant straw hat. A lot of weird things have happened in One Piece over the course of my time with the series, but this here is one of the biggest, strangest, non-comedic, what the actual F moments I've ever come across. I had absolutely no idea what to make of this when I read the chapter. It really was quite a surreal experience, like I was dreaming about reading the latest chapter, and all of a sudden my strange mind just thought it would be a good idea to plonk a colossal straw hat in there simply to confuse me upon waking. But this actually happened, and it shook the fanbase. The idea that Luffy does not possess the only straw hat of its kind in the world is endlessly intriguing, as is the question of who this hat may have belonged to. I mean, we do know that giants exist within the Will of D, so perhaps it was someone from Soul's side of the family, and of course there's always rampant speculation on if it could have belonged to Joy Boy. Whatever the case, this revelation did what One Piece so consistently does best, and sparked a wildfire of intrigue amongst its fans, that is likely to keep burning for the next few years. Number 8 Shanks visits the Gorosei. Now every time Sir Red Hair pops up in the story, it's fairly unexpected, and Marineford taught us that Shanks will appear wherever he desires, whenever he sees fit. So during the Breviary arc, he decided to pay a casual visit to the Gorosei, no big deal, they're just the figureheads of the world government, and one of the ultimate enemies of pirates in general. So how does one of the Yonko just stroll into Marijuana? Well, that along with the identity of the certain pirate Shanks wishes to discuss, are the enduring questions. That justice with the 10th place spot will keep the minds of fans racing for an awful long time to come, but I'd like to give this moment some more credit because it was set up a bit in advance. To me, the reason why Shanks appearing was such a mind-blowing experience was because he already actually briefly featured a couple of chapters prior to this, reacting to the news of Luffy. As readers, we're used to getting a vague appearance of Shanks every couple of years or so after major events, but this was a double punch of red hair straight to the face, and it was amazing. Number 7 the Revolutionary Army Commanders. Thankfully, 2018 was able to deliver on something that had been long, long, long awaited, which is any information whatsoever on the Revolutionary Army. They've been a background feature in the story for a truly absurd amount of time, so seeing them finally stepping in and commanding some attention in the manga was fantastic, and of course this was epitomized with the introduction of the Army's Commanders, within which we found a full spectrum of colorful characters in very classic Oda style. And not only did they help to flesh out the Revolutionary Army, but in the case of Morley specifically, he even provided an answer to the question of who exactly created level 5.5 of Impel Down, which was a very nice little connection. And all in all, these four made me very excited to see what's to come for the Revolutionary Army in the future. Number 6. Blackbeard's reintroduction. As a result of the newly adopted axe structure for Wano, we appear to have been afforded opportunities to explore the greater world within an ongoing major arc. Something that probably deserves mention all on its own, but the crowning jewel of this first exploration is without a doubt the official reintroduction of Marshall D. Teach. This man made a glorious return to the series clad in some of the finest attire that the new world fashion has to offer, and with the largest bounty seen in the series to date at over 2 billion. So he really does know how to make a decent entrance, although I do think I'm going to need some time to adjust to the uh, new aesthetic of the Blackbeard Pirates. But regardless, this was absolutely massive when it occurred in the manga, and it continues to build the figure of Teach into the potential final villain of the series. Number 5. The Defeat 
of Charlotte Katakuri. When reading this fight weekly, I had a lot of mixed opinions. On the one hand, from start to finish, this conflict took an awfully large amount of chapters to conduct. However, at the same time, every panel of this battle was illustrated so flawlessly that I wasn't sure I wanted it to end. But when it did finally conclude, it did not disappoint. Luffy's victory, both physically and mentally against Katakuri, felt well earned, and the panel where Katakuri does finally collapse has become an image as iconic in my mind as some of the greatest moments in the series. Not to mention the phenomenal combat that took place in the chapter preceding it. I mean, Oda really outdid himself on this fight, as well as this antagonist in general, earning the both of them a well-deserved spot on this list. Number 4 Time Traveling Samurai Of all of the non piratey things I never expected in One Piece that would eventually go on to happen, such as zombies, cyborgs, and secret agents, time travel was one that I maintained would never ever be thrown into the series. And 2018 sure did prove me wrong with the revelation that samurai we have known ever since Punk Hazard are actually inhabitants of a world 20 years prior to modern day. Not only that, but we have the ever mysterious figure of Toki, who was rumored to be from much, much further back, and who may have been traveling forward thanks to the use of the Toki Toki no Mi, which would surely be considered one of the most phenomenal devil fruits in existence, although I suppose that the greater world wouldn't even be aware of it, since it may not be reborn for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years at a time, because of the user making their way into the future. But the thought of time travel in One Piece is just insane, especially juxtaposed against an arc that is based in a very traditional historical Japan. Absolute madness, and yet absolute brilliance. Number 3 Kaido is a dragon. Now this wasn't a huge surprise on its own because the potential of Kaido being a dragon had been theorized upon in great detail and hints like Momonosuke made it a very logical deduction. However, I don't think anybody quite anticipated the scale of dragon that is Kaido. Reading this chapter was a bit like stepping into the realm of Dragon Ball, only to realize that Shenron is your infinitely powerful enemy. Oh, and he's, he's a bit drunk. Well, I say a bit, a lot drunk. But despite that, the level of terror is pretty damn high. I've been reading One Piece for a long, long time and I've seen Luffy do a lot of seemingly impossible things. But Kaido, as represented here, will not be beaten by Luffy alone. The power Oda has managed to evoke with this revelation takes the top tier combatants in the series to a whole new level. And I can't help but continue to be 100% captivated. Number 2 The Revelation of Eam. Stepping back into the reverie, we have the introduction of a figure who, for all intents and purposes, may actually single-handedly rule the world as we know it. Eam's introduction was so powerful that it featured an entire collection of Gorosei bowing before him and asking for direction. And that really is all you need to turn the entire world as we know it upside down. What Eam's presence has accomplished is the addition of a foreboding, sinister atmosphere sitting atop the holy land of Marijuana, the likes of which did not exist when we assumed that the world government was controlled by a politically structured group of non-silhouette-clad human beings. What Eam evokes is something ancient, something dangerous, and something that may even surpass Blackbeard as the ultimate antagonist of the series. But with all of that said, 2018 still managed to give us one moment that eclipsed even that. Number 1 The Fifth Emperor so many moments on this list thus far have been about building up the great world of One Piece, but this moment right here is all about Luffy for the very first time bursting into that greater world and announcing that he is here to stay. The acquisition of the unofficial Fifth Emperor title and a bounty of 1.5 billion berries is the end of One Piece as we know it, and the beginning of Luffy's proper campaign to secure the title of Pirate King. After this moment, there isn't going to be a single person in the world who asks themselves, who is this straw hat brat? No, we're done with that. This is a definitive event in the future legend of Pirate King Monkey D. Luffy, and reading this chapter gave me those powerful vibes. After the initial wave of shock, of course. But to me, there was nothing that 2018 had to offer that was able to stop this magnificent declaration to the world. But that pretty much does it for the top 10 best One Piece moments of 2018. I have to say that this year has been one hell of a journey that I have enjoyed immensely, and I cannot wait for what 2019 has to bring us. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favourite moments of 2018. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next year.